Hello and welcome back to Duncan Coates. We've been looking at part three of the University of Helsinki's massive open online course. Part three has been looking at the use of and handling of strings. We're going to finish off the session today. It shouldn't be a long one, probably about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're going to be moving on to part four, which is looking at object oriented programming. So that's going to be really interesting, really exciting. I'm quite looking forward to that section. So let's get cracking with this first exercise. Write a program that reads the names and ages from the user until an empty line is entered. The name and age are separated by a comma in this one. After reading all the user input, the program prints the age of the oldest person. You can assume that the user enters at least one person and that the one of the users is older than the others. Let's move that to the right. Oh, move that to the left. Let's open our class here. Right, so let's get this one coded. So write a program that reads names and ages from the user until an empty line is entered. The name and age are separated by commas, uh, and enter the S display the um, oldest age. So we're going to need int age equals zero because we're going to need to store the oldest age in there. We're going to need to use a while loop. So let's use the while true. Um, so string input equals scanner dot next line. Um, we can use our the if statement here. So if input dot equals that, uh, that will break. Just put that there so you can see that we're always working within the while loop. So now we need to split our array. So we'll do a string column is equal to input dot split uh, the comma. Then we're going to use our age, which is going to be uh, age equals integer dot value of, and that is going to be a value of column, and that's always going to be column one. Right, so we're going to need to do a comparison. So here we could say if age is greater than, okay, we'll call it 10, or say n. Um, say n equals age. So we haven't created n yet, that's why we've got that error. So all we'll do up here next to age is just do n and then we've got that initialized. And then outside of our while loop we can do system out age of the oldest plus n. Okay, let's give that a little run and see what we get. Perfect, there we go. So let's submit that one. There we are, that's great. Let's close that and then head back to the website. There we are, refresh this one. And then we've got name of the oldest. So this is going to be pretty similar. All we're going to do is print out the name, isn't it? So write a program that reads names and ages until empty line is entered. That's fine. We're sort of pros at that by now. The name and the age are uh, separated by a comma. That's fine. We've got that. After reading all the user input, the program prints the name of the oldest person. You can assume that the user enters at least one person, so that's fine. OK. All right, let's get that one started. So let's open up our TMC. Class. There we go. So we can use uh, Control Shift and T to open the other one. Just drag that over here. Okay. So again, for this one, very very similar. There's only going to be one sort of subtle change. So we can copy this. So we're going to need. Oh, don't forget to do your GitHub if you're still doing. If you're you know using GitHub. 
So int age and n are equal to zero. String name, because we're going to need to print the name out, so we need somewhere to store it. So while true, uh, we're going to use string input is equal to scanner dot next line. Uh, we're going to use the if statement to break out of the loop if we need to. So if input dot equals that. We're going to break there. So this is our if. So we're going to work in between these two. Here we go. And then we'll do string column is equal to input dot split. Cool. Comma. There we go. Uh, do we need to print the age? I can't, can't quite remember. I don't need to print it, but we will need to know what the age is. Because we'll need the age for the comparison. So we can do age is equal to integer dot value of, and that is going to be our column one. And then we're going to use the if statement as well. So if age is greater than n, uh, n equals age. And name is equal to a name is equal to um, column zero and then close this one down there on the right we need to print out the system out so the uh, to print the data out so we will do system out name of the oldest plus name. There we go. Okay. I don't feel quite as confident about this one as I did the previous one, but let's give it a run anyway and see what we get back. Oh, well, there you go. Passed. Excellent. That's okay, that one. Perfect, there we go. Right, let's minimize that and go back here. Do a little refresh. Oh, length of a string. In the next exercise, you'll be asked for the length of the names. You can find out the length of the string with the dot length method. So here we've got string word equals equestrium, int length is equal to word dot length. So this method would return an integer, which is why we can assign, we're not really assigning a string to it, but we're assigning um, the return value of an int. Uh, System.outprint, the length of the word of equestrian is plus length 11. Okay, that's cool. Uh, write a program that reads user names, birth years from the user until an empty line is entered. The name of the birth year are separated by commas. So again, we're very familiar with this by now. After that, the program prints the longest name and the average of birth years. If multiple names are equally longest, you can print any of them. You can assume that the user enters at least one person. Right, let us get our TMC back. So let's move that to the left, that to the right. I am going to copy some of this. I should have copied the while as well. There we go, All right, let's close this one down. Paste that in. So let's just see again. So we need the name, 
an average of birth years. So we need string name. We will need um, integer sum and count equals zero. Let's just do those for now and then see what else we need as we carry on. So we've got sum and count. We need birth year. We don't need to create an average because we can use the 1.0 uh, times sum, etc. for that. So let's start working through this. So while true, we need that. String input, we need that. We've got our if, that's great. Okay, so we've got our string column separated by a comma. Let's call this one sum. So sum is going to be equal, uh, is going to be plus equals because we need to keep a running total. Uh, Integer.value of one. Why doesn't it like that? Variable sum might not have been initialized. Okay. We're going to need to update the count each time we go through as well. Count plus plus. So that's going to help us give our get our total, uh, and then. Uh, help us provide it provide the average because we'll divide some by count, won't we? There we go. What else do we need? We need name length. Although we don't need to initialize that one. I don't think. Not that it makes any odds, really. Uh, so we've got count plus plus, and then we've got name length is equal to column zero dot length. There we go. And I am going to get rid of this because we're going to write it again. Um, let's just move that. So we've got sum, count, birth year, name length. So if we're comparing the lengths, we'll need somewhere else to store another variable. So let's call this one temp. Um, so we can say if, oh, if temp is less than name length, temp equals name length and name length is equal to column zero. Okay, so we've got an error, that's not a problem. So it says, let's see, so it says incompatible type string cannot be converted to int. Uh, that would be because I am wrong, it's meant to be name. Um, what else do we need? Oh, we need these printouts, don't we? Um, so we can do system out longest name plus name, and then why is it like that? Ah, oh. there we go. And then what do we need? Average of years. go and then that is going to be plus 1.0 times sum divided by count okay let's give that a test 
keep everything crossed. Look at that, we got it first time. Excellent, let's submit that. Lovely, so we've got our little pass. Let's send that off. Give our website a little refresh. I do need to go back and find that uh, one missing from part two. Hopefully, uh, you guys should all have 100%. Right, there we go. Oh, we finished. Oh, there you go. So you've reached the end of this section. Continue to the next. Remember to check your points. We've done that. Cool. No way, we're on part four. Wow, so all you gotta do is just fill this out. I'll quickly do it now, I'll pause the video. Oh wow, that's it, and then we're on to part four. Let's see what we're doing there. Ooh, object orientated programming. Brilliant, so this can be quite an interesting topic to get try and get your head round. Um, but I think we'll get there. I've got some good analogies, some good ways to describe object orientated programming. Um, so I'm sure we'll be fine. So excellent, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Good luck, happy coding, and I will speak to you all soon.